Welcome to Conversations with Dr. Skip Mason. Pastor, preacher, historian, author, teacher, librarian, archivist, world traveler, collector, family historian, avid reader, and creator of the popular Vanishing Black Atlanta Facebook page. But a lot of folks who love history. Most Most importantly, importantly, he's our dad dad, who loves his family and who taught us the importance of our history and having important conversations. Join him now for this episode of Conversations with Dr. Skip. dear friend, mentor, and professor and teacher likes to say, baby, uh, if you missed the general conference of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, you missed something. I am Skip Mason. I am delighted to uh, share with you in this general conference uh, wrap up. First of all, first of all, let me give thanks to God. Let me give thanks to God just for God being God and for all of the wonderful blessings that God has bestowed upon all of us. I just want to acknowledge God's presence right now in this moment. And I'll tell you why momentarily. But I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to our senior bishop, Lawrence L. Reddick. Uh, the third and Sister Wendy Jones Reddick to the distinguished College of Bishops now under the leadership of Bishop Sylvester Williams uh, and Lady Carmen Leonard Williams uh, to the distinguished chairs of the uh, CIT now a, a department uh, Bishop Walker and my Bishop Bishop Thomas L Brown Senior and Dr. Louise Baker Brown, and to the new General Secretary of Communications, Information and Technology, Dr. Teresa Duhart, I greet you and thank you for this opportunity. When I tell you, brothers and sisters, I felt the love at the General Conference, I promise you. Uh, And I say this as humbly as I can. I was so overwhelmed uh, by just the greetings, the love, the embrace of people who obviously don't have anything else to do on Sunday at five o'clock PM, but to sit in front of their computer or watch YouTube and listen to little old me talk about our church and bring some of the giants, the heroes and sheroes. And I am grateful to each of you that I had a chance to meet, to embrace, to hug. I give thanks to God, to you, for you uh, and for this platform and for your tremendous, tremendous support. Today, we're going to talk about the General Conference. This is a wrap up. And and what you're going to do, brothers and sisters, is hear little of me and more of these phenomenal guests that I have invited to come uh, and to uh, share, uh, to be with uh, us today. Uh, I hope I got them all up on the screen. And if they are anything like me, they are dog tired. When I tell you I got back on Friday, my body was numb. I could barely get into the bed. I mean, that is the truth. I could hardly get into to the bed. Let me introduce you. I'm, I'm just going to present them. They're going to tell you who they are. We got uh, Reverend Cameron uh, Cookendall. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, we have the Reverend Valencia Etna, Reverend Dr. Amariah McIntosh. Uh, we have Reverend uh, Alfred Harris. We have Reverend Dr. Essie 
D. Clark George, and we have Brother James Blackman. I think we have all of the spectrum covered. We got the young adult, we got youth young adult, we got preachers, we got former presiding elders retired, we got everybody represented across the spectrum. And so I welcome each of you today. Uh, we are here to talk about the conference um, and to share a little video, some clips and all. But I greet each of you and uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, with me today. I'm glad y'all made it back. Let me ask you this question. Are you still tired? Yes. Somewhat, a little. Listen, <laughs> I tell you, I, I was just worn out. Long days. Uh, food challenges. I ate more chicken fingers and fried <laughs> fish. I don't eat chicken fingers, y'all, but when you're hungry, you eat what's in front of you. It's All true. that cake and barbecue and soul food they they had. I tell you, well, let's let's just jump right in it. What 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 were your impressions of the general conference? Uh Reverend Dr. Essie, let's start with you, honey. All right. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Skip, for inviting me here. Uh, and I am just tickled pink that I had the opportunity, first of all, to take a part of my vacation at the General Conference. And um, as I look over my shoulder for just the, the other day, I enjoyed everything and everybody, uh, I, I, I'm serious about that. And the, one of the best decisions I ever made as a senior citizen was to rent a scooter so that I could get around and see everybody. Uh, before I say anything, let me just, let me back up and say, uh, and give honor, hallelujah, to all of our leaders, oh God all of our bishops, our new bishops, and our, our bishops that have been serving through the years. I thank God for each of you, my sisters. It's, it feels good to put an S on sisters and my brothers. So I'm not sure as a wrap up, I had a ball and no, I'm not tired because when you get a certain age, you, 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 you get a sense of wisdom and you know when to uh, uh, cut back. So I cut back and uh, my last day I spent in the hotel room packing, but you could hear me all the way down the hall because my bishop, Bishop Sylvester Williams was preaching and you could hear me hollering down the hall, yes! So I had to <laughs> myself back but i i've had a ball y'all i've just had a ball honestly well I, I i am so glad it opened up i thought the opening uh worship service on sunday was just phenomenal yes the music was fire the yes. preaching was fire uh reverend reverend etna uh you all did that thing okay bless you everyone sunday and we want a church, a show. I would say you did that D thing. I'm telling you the truth. Uh, the music throughout was just magnificent. The devotions um, uh, and through the services and all. So so tell us a little bit about, uh, first of all, were you pleased with the outcome of the music ministry at the General Conference? I Yes, I was pleased. We're always thinking what we can do better. So that, you know, just, just, that's just who we are, but very, very pleased, very pleased with every team, every group of every person who was managing a service. You all didn't know that, but we have an amazing team of people who are part of uh, the Connection Music and Arts Ministry. And so for each service, there was someone managing. It. And so therefore what you heard and what you saw was people coming together and following the lead of those who were in the management place. But then those times right before meetings, when we just all came together and sang songs you knew and that we knew that just got us ready for what it is that we had to deal with. Like I said before, I knew that we were gonna need to be David with our hearts because we knew that we were gonna be Saul-like situations on that floor and that we were going to need to be that place 
of peace, that place of worship, even if for five minutes, to keep us grounded that what we were there to do was about God's church, not just about ours. Well, well, you did that, and I think everybody would uh, agree uh, with me uh, that uh, it really set the tone uh, for uh, the worship experience, because we know we're in a conference to take care of business, mm -hmm. but uh, we're also to do God's will, um, and so it is important. And, and so the preaching, let, let me play this clip from the opening uh, service is born given all the millions and billions of people been born it's new every second is new every day is new every general conference is new in fact if you don't know it you are new but he says it springs uh, that's my bishop yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just got off the phone with him just a few minutes ago. He was preaching. That he and Dr. Louise just arrived back home to, today. Uh, they had more meetings Friday and, and, and Saturday. Uh, and as he jokingly said, punishment after punishment after punishment. Uh, but, but he preached that thing and it was just yes, yes. wonderful. He did. Um, uh, Reverend Cam, this was your first general conference. Tell us what you thought. Tell us tell us what this general conference was to you your first time. Well, <laughs> you know, before Dr. Mason, I'd heard so many different things about it in terms of preparation from people who've been to general conference. And I tell you, every single thing they said, good, bad, and different was true. Was true. Even from People saying wear comfortable shoes. That's true. To even what you said about Dr. Nellie B. King getting up to that microphone. All of it was just true. And it was a good experience, though. It was a good experience to be able to see how the church operates, see how it works. The preaching was amazing. The music was yes. amazing. It was good to see how, again, the business of the church worked. How do we do these resolutions? How do the committees meet? How do we decide on the budget and things of that nature? There she is. Uh, how we decide on certain things. And I'm just grateful to have had the opportunity to be there and be in this particular spot I was in. Um, you get a different view from where I was sitting. So I'm definitely grateful. Well, there's a picture, and I'm going to try to find it, uh, of you and your pastor, uh, uh, presiding elder Paris Lester and... Mm -hmm. Uh, Bishop Hames, which I think is just going to be a classic photo. Uh, I've already predicted that you'll probably come in as a 75th or 78th bishop somewhere down the line. Don't do him uh, like that. The mark, is, <laughs> the mark is on you, my brother, already. But let's, now let's, let, 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 let's shift for, for just a, a, a second. We talk about uh, people. There, there are people in our church uh, at every general conference, we can expect for them to be at a microphone. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 Somebody ought amen. to say amen. 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 And, and, and the list goes <laughs> on, but there, there are a couple of people in this panel right here. Brother Blackman, Brother, Brother Harrison. Uh, uh, Y'all spit on that microphone a whole lot. <laughs> I tell you the truth. Brother, Brother Blackman, uh, you you were on a part of the resolutions committee, uh, and so you did some early work, which of course Bishop Brown lauded and uh, your work. But but tell us about this experience for you at the general conference. Well, this is the fifth general conference, so I'm 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 a bit in the game, um, so I'm, I'm it wasn't nothing new. But what this general conference difference was showed us the church that. We have become so emotionalized. We make decisions, um, and 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 that what got me because when you look at when we got the resolutions in January, we're well, December, um, and then we looked in the book. There really wasn't anything of substance except for uh, maybe a couple. When I have to applaud Dr. Edner for her uh, resolution, but there wasn't a lot of things of substance that was in the resolution book. Um, so when we got to the general conference, there really wasn't a sense of expectancy of, of change. We actually did change. So I'm actually grateful that 
some of the things that came on the floor actually did happen. So, um, but I'm, I'm just grateful for this general conference. I'm, I'm glad that it's over. But my favorite hymn is in Are We Yet Alive? So I got a chance to see all of my favorite people who I have not seen uh, in four or five years. So it was just an amazing experience. I, and I have to say, Dr. Joy was the first person I saw when we pulled up, when we pulled up at the hotel and she had a scooter in the back seat. <laughs> Watch yourself. <laughs> well, Reverend Harris, thank you, Brother Blackman. Reverend Harrison, you and I served on the Episcopacy Committee. Yes, we did. And of course, what happens in the Episcopacy Committee room stays in the room. Uh, yes. It was quite, quite uh, an adventure. But outside of the room uh, and on the floor, you were very vocal, very, very passionate. Uh, about certain issues, and particularly those dealing uh, with our brothers and sisters in the 10th and the 11th Episcopal District. Tell us a little bit about your general conference experience. Well, this was my third general conference as a delegate and uh, probably my fifth general conference attending. Uh, I was in much prayer, and we were in much prayer coming into the general conference from the 11th Episcopal District, the 10th Episcopal District. And let me just give kudos to the uh, Dr. Uh, Etner on the musical program because it just took us into the heavens to receive direction from God. And it was very critical that we receive that. Uh, I, I, after trying to run down Dr. Essie Clock on her scooter. I couldn't do it. <laughs> we made it to the we made it to the floor. So we were very prayerful over our choices, over our decisions. And there were a couple of passionate issues that really resonated with me in my spirit uh regarding the uh the movement of where the church will be going in the future. Uh, having been uh, born a CME, uh, having been one of the last uh, elected uh, national youth presidents of the Christian Methodist and Church, Invincible Church. It was important to me to take all of that training and all of that rearing to the floor and in the committees where we serve to be a, a voice for the voiceless. Uh, and we, this was a glass break, a glass ceiling breaking conference. Yeah. I believe we're on the right track with where we're going with the new uh, appointments uh, to the Episcopal leadership, uh, even with uh, Bishop uh, Teresa Jefferson Snorton's appointment as development and the ecumenical and development officer that's going to lead us into so many great avenues that we can really partake of and really uh came from so i'm excited about that so uh i chose very specifically and strategically and spiritually led which issues i really could speak to that resonated with me and i'm so glad that god saw them through to the end amen thank you so much brother harrison now, there was a sister at the conference who was walking around with a cell phone camera. My mind. I mean, she was all up in your face. And five, magically, five to 10 seconds later, everything that she has captured was on, was on <laughs> Facebook. Let, let, let me shout out to the wonderful social media team Dr. Dr. Duhart, Reverend Dr. Amarai, Mackin, uh, Todd, yes. and others. There are others, and, 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 and Reverend Doc, you can share who those others was. But I'm telling you right now that the General Conference social media team was fire. Yes. It was fire on Facebook, social media. I mean, instant people were able to, those who were not able to be there, could see what was going on, to see who the people were. Uh, at the mic, I, I could not forward fast enough to my page and several pages some of the things that uh, Reverend uh, McIntosh posted along with the great social media uh, team. Reverend McIntosh, so glad to have you, my sister. Tell us a little bit about the, the, the process uh, and how you all were able, and, and wait a minute, and I got to pull his picture up, but but uh, Reverend K. Edward Neal, Cornelius Neal is a beast. Yeah. Do you hear me? He is an <laughs> yeah. absolute beast of, of a photographer. Mm -hmm. Rev, Reverend, Amar, Reverend Dr. Um, Amar, tell us about the social media campaign that you all put out. Uh, Dr. Teresa, did, well, let me backtrack. I ended up being the local host chair for publicity, 
social media and communications. From that, Dr. Teresa Duhart organized the social media team for the General Conference. Uh, Reverend Cornelius Neal served as our official conference photographer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. along with uh, Sister Toya McQueen of the Young Adults, Reverend Sarita Collins, Brother Yvonne Peterson, myself, and Dr. Duhart. So we are the ones who got the media out for everything that was going on. I ended up being a photographer by accident. Reverend Neal had to go back home to do a funeral. And so to keep the images going, I just picked up my little phone and just started clicking away. I bought a new Canon camera that I finally got to working the last day of the conference. And I'm a, he's the professional. I just like to take pictures. And thank you for everyone who agreed and gave their consent to have their photos taken. Glad for the opportunity to share with the world the workings of the general conference. And thank you all for allowing the second Episcopal district to host you for the first time since 1930. Wow. Wow. I did not realize that that was the first time uh, since 1930. Let, I think it would be appropriate at this moment to uh, thank the second Episcopal uh, district for the tremendous job that uh, they did, Bishop Marvin Thomas, uh, and the entire host committee uh, rolled out the red uh, carpet for us. Uh, and uh, kudos to them. I saw them working, but we know that the work has started years prior to that. And uh, we are grateful uh, to the tremendous work that, that they did. Let me share another clip, uh, if you would, uh, please. Uh oh, look like we might be having some sound issue here. Hang tight. Let me let me pull up another. Church to impact our community. Maybe because we, maybe because of a misplaced emphasis mm. on words yeah. instead of deeds. Mm -hmm. As yeah. I near my seat, mm -hmm. I believe the real question for Peter and us in these closing hours is when will we move? beyond the dangers of these at every level of the church, the Episcopacy, general officers, judicial council, and the local church by loving Jesus. I'm sitting there acting like, come on preachers, is there any time that you've gotten up, thought you had a good sermon, but by the time you left, you recognized you had gone to Flunk City. <laughs> is there anybody in the choir who recognized that yo, you had practiced that song for a long time then when you got up to sing it something just wasn't right you stared it for the test and you go take the test and what you thought was on it is not really what was on it and you leave out thinking that you had stared it like an A but you walked out with an F that's alright maybe I'm talking to myself but I'm trying to find <laughs> wow. God gives us prayer to sustain us. I gave Reverend Valencia Edner a song that I wanted the choir to sing today after the message. And my wife hit the song on the head a few weeks ago when we were in Fort Lauderdale together the bishops were in retreat preparing for the general conference 
And she awoke early one morning and she opened the curtain and looked out toward the Atlantic and she said, there's a storm mm. out on the ocean and it looks like it's coming this way. Yeah. And I told Sister Valencia, I want to hear the choir sing, there is a song. It's out over the ocean now. But wherever you go, whether it be Alabama or California, Ohio or Kentucky or, 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 or Florida or Alaska, it's moving your way, whether it's in the... Yes. No. I tell you, we had some good preaching. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had some good yeah. teaching. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I think what I value, and I'm going to ask you to, to share what you what was perhaps one of your memorable moments soon. I, I, I think the preaching is always, it's good to hear and our bishops when they come in the session, you know, and each of them in their own uh, style and, and, and way that they bring the word. I think truly, truly inspired. Let's, let's shift. We had uh elections obviously we elected um new general officers and kudos and congratulations to all of the uh general officers elected yes uh, new Bless ones and those that were returning uh to those that retired uh as well yes. uh, we want to thank uh, god for them uh and you can find all of their names uh obviously uh on the cme facebook page and i'll try to scroll down at the bottom for anybody who's been under a rock and does not realize we elected some new bishops and some new general officers uh as well uh but let's let's talk about uh for a moment the election of, of bishop first of all and i tried to get it downloaded but uh i could not uh get it downloaded bishop marshall gilmore called in and then yeah prayer yes. uh what? i actually hold on just a second i don't know whether you'll be able to hear the prayer or not uh i'm going to try to pull it i'm going to try to play it from my computer and see if you can hear it just a second Can you all hear a little bit of it? Yes. It's a little faint. Kind of off the buttons in here. Yes. Well, at any rate, um, that prayer did something for us. Amen. I, yes, I'm yes, convinced yes. of that. Uh, Bishop Kelby Heath, Bishop C.K. Heath, I got to get used to the initials. Uh, Bishop C.K. Heath called me today um, and said, man, that that prayer did something for him. He said, just calm the conference. And yes. it, it yes. really did. We needed that. And uh, it was a wonderful moment for us. Um, I, I want you to talk that th there's something about the e anticipation and expectation of electing bishops. Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge, of course, this year, I think, was the fact that we used the little clickers. Um, and, and so it creates while it saves time, a whole lot of time, it does take away from the buildup and the excitement that we are accustomed to. Uh, and after the results were in, uh, we realized that we had four uh, bishops duly elected in, in the first ballot. That's yes, right, yeah. My, my, my AME boys can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they've been dragging me. They said, man, that, that election was rigged. Ain't no way you all could have been elected. Four. No, it wasn't you? real. It was not no, real. Was it? So, let me, let um, me just say, yes, Dr. Please. Skip, that uh, it was a miracle yes. from God yes. that moved mm -hmm. like we did. And, it, the, and also the miracle that we were able to elect five bishops. 
Yes. My Lord. God today. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit was all over that place. So God showed us God's favor in the election. Um, some of the young people were sitting by me over on the side. They said, who do you think is going to be elected? And I said, uh, three of the H's and uh, Modest <laughs> Anders. And they yeah. laughed. I said, they will be elected today. That's what and happened. After they were, pardon? Said, after, they were in, that after they were elected, then we had to stand over to the side and wait a while for uh, Bishop uh, Adige. I hope I'm saying his name, but I knew he would be elected. I said, one more thing I need to say on this. But while I was coming down the hallway earlier on the day of election, I ran into Bishop Helton and I pushed the button to go downstairs and he jumped on the elevator. I said, good morning. He said, good morning. I said, I feel prophetic today. Good morning, Bishop. Oh. And he said, he said, Esther, I'm going to hold on to, I said, you will be bishop today, man. This is your time. Wow. And God, see, y'all going to make me shout. God. Go ahead, moved. go ahead. It was a miracle. It we had a was. miracle. It was, it was a miracle. Anybody else jump in? What, what was that moment like for you? It, it, was, it, was, it was a phenomenal moment because using the clicker system, as you say, I think a lot of people weren't actually realizing that we had elected the first of the four American bishops in addition to going on to the other slate in such a calm and in such a um uh, 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 exponential manner exponential manner um it was just I, I think that it, it clearly aligned with us doing something so new that it clearly defined the choices of the people. And the choices of the people could not be disputed. It could not be uh, debated. Uh, there was no motion that needed to be on the floor. No debate. No no previous question. We had no time for that. We went right in and did what God led us to do as a delegation. So I, I just, I, I, I mean, even with the election of the African-born bishop, yes. we just, the order, the order of the candidates that were elected, I don't think um, anyone could have predicted the order in which they could have been elected. And it was our determination that a woman would be in on the first ballot. And God just yes. made it so that all four of them were on on the first ballot. And um, then we crossed, we crossed geographical lines where we elected a Liberian to yes. go to the 11th district of the eastern, central, northern, oh, southern Africa regions, and they have received him wholeheartedly. God, I tell you, I, I'm just, I'm just, uh, it, it, I, I was tired when I got on the show, Doctor Skip, but you just yeah. ignited something in me with that whole discussion. So I'm just, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm just, no, I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> I, think I, I, election, you know, yeah. I think that yeah. the election was a mandate from the Holy Spirit. And I and I will never believe that Bishop Gilmore's prayer did not shift something. Yeah, yeah. I think we went into the election on a political mind. I wow. think that that prayer wow. shifted us to spirit. Mm -hmm. And the mandate that came out of the order mm -hmm. was important. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, There was a quiet calmness, yes. steadiness yes. to the person who was the first. Yes. And I yes. think that, that, is a ma that was a major mandate from the people through their spirits. Yes. To say. And so I'm grateful. You asked our, our most important moment. You hit it. When Bishop Gilmore began mm -hmm. to pray, I mean, I felt the tears well up because That's I right. felt a shift mm -hmm. in the atmosphere. Yep. Yes. And, our, and the way that they were elected, I think, was a, a, a direct response yes Hallelujah. my god yes. Know, Dr. yes jump right on in please i just want to say the election took place mm. right after the ecumenical service mm. and our mm. ecumenical guests were invited to remain if they mm. so chose and they were just awed and fascinated by our process Mm, uh, they may try to take some of our ideas back to their denominations. 
Now, well, let me let me let me. Things, yes, they they were very impressed and very awed with our process. Again, how we got everybody elected on the first ballot. <laughs> I, I think it was close to lunchtime, you know, like they say, just before holiday, a jury will find you guilty just so they can go home. Yeah. <laughs> we got them elected because it was it was way past lunchtime. And, and you got you got to make sure this was my first general conference as a delegate. Okay. So this is the first time I actually got to vote for our leaders. Hmm. And we cannot leave out the historic mo mo movement yes. of Doc, uh, Bishop Teresa uh, Jefferson Snorton being oh, put into the position of ecumenical and development officer because had not had yes. not that happened, right. we would have only been electing yes. four bishops. That's right. So having yes. that in place, uh, and that was a whole nother trend. I know you're going to go into that, but that was a whole nother trend yes. to take us in a whole new direction of where this church is going. I, I totally agree, and we're going yeah. to discuss that in just uh, just a moment because can I, can I say something about the yes, Bishop please, Palmer? Go ahead. Yes, I'm Bishop right. Palmer. Yes, I, I I I guess between Bishop Palmer and his yes. call for us to get beyond ourselves and get back to what really mattered, coupled with Bishop Gilmore's prayer, if you knew Jesus, there would shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. indeed. And yes, it was indeed. Well, I tell you, uh, Joan Gilmore Oglesby, Bishop Gilmore's daughter, who's a dear friend, we were texting each other through the conference, and um, she sent me uh, photos of the handwritten prayer. This is what he read from. Ain't that wonderful? And I said, I said, I said, Joan, I want those. I said, yes. if he tosses them in the trash, you put them in an the envelope and send them, send them to me. Now, this morning. She asked for my address. I don't know whether she's teasing me or not. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, I tell you, that was a, a high moment for us. Let's watch Amen. a few clips um, yeah. that uh, will bring back a few memories. And I apologize in advance. I don't have clips of all of the bishops being um, being lifted or in the tradition that we call being, being carried um, uh, up. Uh, but I wanted to share a few clips that I do have uh, yeah. for those who were not there to to, to witness it. Uh, here we have, let's see, let's see. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because Bishop Ajay was in the judicial session. Mm -hmm. And yes. by the time he got down the steps, there were a few people there to carry him over to the next set of steps. 
<laughs> get there uh, in time enough to, to get that. And uh, Bishop, Bishop Heath got elected so quickly. By the time I was trying to get myself together, uh, to get down to, I missed a portion of it. So that's just an excuse for me to bring Bishop Heath on the show and, and, and celebrate him. But what a tremendous moment. What, what does that do to you all when we see this time tradition in our church and in other churches where we carry the Episcopal leader uh, to 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 the stage. What what does that say to you all, uh, Reverend Cam? What, this was your first time seeing that in person. What yeah. does that mean to you? You know, I heard it because I'm gonna tell you when we were on the way up here. Uh, we were on our bus. It was about nine of us, and it was Reverend uh, Eddie Jumper and uh, Reverend Willie Ward, and they were talking about if Pastor Lester was to be elected. He said, "Well." You know they look. They they were saying, "Well, with us being older, you're going to get some young guys to carry you up there." But it was just, it was so good to see it, and it was just a inspiring moment for our church. I mean, to see younger bishops, to see a more yes. diverse set of yes. bishops, to see. I mean, y'all, like, <laughs> it's sometimes you can't even describe it because it's just so wonderful to see this new day. Five bishops. I say we got five on it. We have another female bishop. Now we have more representation in the college. And I'll tell you, Dr. He got elected. I saw him come up. It was an inspiring moment. But when I saw Dr. Denise, I mean, Reverend Denise Sanders, modest get up, I had tears in my eyes. I'm not going to lie to y'all. And I saw her get up because I know how hard she has fought for this and how hard the CME Church has fought for this. And I was just like, you know what? It's a good day in the CME church. It's a new day. It's a bold day. And we are elected five bishops, one of them being female. I'm just, wow. Well, it was. And she's assigned to the second Episcopal district. Yes, she is. Go ahead, then. I got your bishop now. <laughs> yes, she is. So, so y'all, let, let's shift for just a moment. And let's talk about Bishop Teresa Jefferson. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. And let's let's talk about my that God. amazing uh, oh, Episcopal my. address. Yes. Repeat after yeah. me, class. Be bold. Be bold. Be bold. Be bold. Face Be bold. now. Face, Face now. now. Embrace Face now. now. Embrace now. Embrace now. See you. See you. I'm, I'm telling Amen. you, she, that was that was one for the ages. And what I loved about it, you know, it was late in the afternoon and Bishop Jefferson Snort made it clear she was going to read every single word in the book. <laughs> and Bishop Jefferson Snorton read every single word in that book. And we are, yes. I that she think did. We, we, we are the better for that Episcopal address. We know that the address is a yes. representation of the College of Bishops, but typically one bishop Amen. takes the leadership and prepares it, and um, she did that. Let's, let's talk about it for a few minutes. And, and what does okay. it mean as we're going into 2022 to 2026 uh, to be bold, face now, embrace net, see new? Because I'll tell you this, is that when we were on the floor dealing with some new issues, Mm -hmm. People were very quick to remind that you talking about you want to be bold. That's right. And you mm -hmm. want to face new, but you still got this old way of thinking. My or my. you're not willing to put money into and invest into. I'm Come telling on. you, folks, put it back That's up in their face. Y'all jump in and tell me what your thoughts were Good on God the Episcopal right. dress and what That's it means for our church. Anybody? Personally, yeah. for me, it was excellent. And Bishop... Uh, Jefferson Snorton did as I knew she would, and that was to represent the scholarly abilities that God has given her and her commitment to the love of the church. She did her work, and what else I love about it is that she just didn't get only her thoughts or, or the college's yes. thoughts into the address she went among the people that blessed me and found out what the people were thinking yes. and integrated their thoughts also in the address for me after all of these years of coming to the general conferences since 1994 wow. that's the first time i've seen that 
And I think not only a not only a not only a scholarly uh, prospect of the uh, church, but she did a prophetic prospect of where the church was. It was such a bold and truthful assessment of where the church was, but it didn't just leave us there, but it gave us practical and solutions and bold solutions that we could embrace and that we could move forward and we could see the next steps of where we're going. I tell you, I, I it, it breathed life into me just hearing the yes. address. And I'm so glad she read every single word of it yeah, because it was too. necessary, it was prophetic, it was profound, it was provoking, and it was prolific in how she led us into the future of that new position for the college. We have shifted the whole church in one vote. My goodness. Yeah, can I, I was going to say, yes, please. I was going to say, if I could address, I'm reading right out the book. I took notes. Look, look, I, I came to work, right? And <laughs> under <laughs> under that uncomfortable truth section, and yeah. she was so honest, yeah. even in the wording yeah. in the book, she was really honest and just discreet with it. I mean, not even discreet with it. Number six said, we have sent our best and brightest back to the children's table mm. when it was their vision <laughs> and gifts that we needed. Yeah. By knowing the value of children, youth, young adults in our churches. I got this collar on. Oh, I'm about to start preaching because we see here. <laughs> the, it's, it's in this statement, I broke it down. They recognize that we're the best and we're the brightest, but they still sent us back. They recognize that we had vision and gifts that were needed, but they sent us back. They understood we had value, but they sent us back. And I was so grateful for Bishop Teresa Jefferson Snow, and I talked to her afterward for putting that in there because that has is what has happened. I'm telling you, not just in my church, not just in the church as a whole. You can ask many children and youth and young adults. We get sent back to the children's table but we have so many gifts we have so many ideas we have so many talents and that's why even me representing the connection youth ministry we're going to be bold because we recognize we're not worthy just to sit at the children's table we want a seat at the actual table oh good god about it but 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 Reverend Cockendall, there's some of them that is 40 and 50 and 60 that get sent back to the children's table too. It ain't just the young people. It's not just the young people. She addressed the elephants in the room. My, my. Amen. Notice, notice, Reverend, as you spoke about the children being sent back to, to the children's table, that evening, the last evening of the elect of the of the uh, parliamentary proceed of the uh, policy polity of the conference, we uh, voted to give the additional twenty thousand dollars to right. the connectional youth ministry. Praise so God. things were turning around and That's voices right. were being heard. So we we I'd like to claim that I'm still young. We might be at the children's table, but we cried out for even the crumbs off the table. So it was it was a blessing. Oh that twenty thousand dollars. Oh good God almighty I was shouting I was I was talking <laughs> with the young adult preachers and we were just over there shouting saying yes it's an investment that has to be be made. We want to do bigger and brighter things in the Connection of Youth Ministry, but let's be real. We need money for it. So I want to thank the General Conference personally on behalf of Reverend Sarita Collins and Dr. Carl Michael Crutchfield for giving us and voting up that $20,000. My God. That, that was a thing with... with yeah, go ahead, James. Go right ahead. Mrs. Snowden, she does that the entire time she's been in the principal district, the entire 11 years. She has always listened to the young adults, the children, those who are actually 60 and under. Because like you said, Ron McIntosh, uh, 55 and 60 olds get put back to that. But she has always done that. And her principal address, um, and actually the, actually in the, uh, the ecumenical officer, it came about because we were having conversations with her about how our church can operate and use outside funding to offset our budget. And so when they were in uh, Fort Myers, I got a call, me and Tiffany, uh, Tiffany Thompson with the young adult president, and her and Bishop Reddick were like, we like he's your a, idea. He's a spitfire. <laughs> and yeah, and so it, it, it and, and, and not just her, but she has a way of presenting things to the rest of them that opens their eyes to see things differently. 
So, so I'm, I'm excited. Uh, look forward to actually seeing the, the fruits of her labor uh, for this ecumenical elementary office. What I wanted Let's to about, inject yeah, in here. Yeah, go ahead, Reverend is, Essie, Dr. Essie. Is, is that we cannot forget uh, the insight in my opening statement regarding this. I forgot to add the insight of the total college of bishops in the recommendations of the college of bishops. That's some bad stuff. These six steps uh, really showed us how our bishops are thinking. The six recommendation locked it down. And I must go back to even the uh, Episcopal committee I want to thank those of you who served on that Episcopal yeah. committee mm -hmm. because what you showed us, and, and definitely kudos to the chair and vice chair for leading that committee, you were able to use skills to get that team uh, together so that we could elect uh the uh, ecumenical development uh, officer of our church. That that was key. Uh, generally, there's a lot of tension and frustration. I'm not saying there wasn't any, because I know it was. But uh, you all moved that committee to no end. And I just want to thank you for uh, working hard, everyone, uh, and all the committees, but I'm talking about the Episcopal Committee right now. Y'all Y'all did y'all work. Y'all did some work up in there. And thank you, because uh, at this time of at the general conference, uh, the people get a chance to yeah. say what they want. That's yeah. right. And That's what right. we did was buy into the recommendations that our bishops gave us. That's powerful. I'm talking show enough. Powerful. Very much so. <laughs> let me let me let me let me. Oh, Reverend Edna, go right ahead. I was just going to say one of the things that was most important to me about this Episcopal address is not only did it call for us to do, which all of them have called for us to do, it showed us where it's being done. That's right. So that we can no longer say we don't know how to do it. He gave names and places and people whose names may never have ever crossed our lips. We may never have seen these people. These were not people who were sitting necessarily in the delegation, but they're doing the work. And so when we see that, that means they're a phone call away to say, how did you do this? And so we can't keep saying we don't know how to get that done when we see people who are doing it. And she was able to find out who those people were and to present. Yes. yes. That did so much for the for the morale of those who are in ministry who often feel invisible. Yes. It was yes. very important. Very important. It, it, it was it all action. It was, yeah. Go ahead, as doctor. She mentioned she didn't isolate herself to write Thank this you. address. She Thank had support, mm -hmm. she had help, she had resources, not just mm -hmm. from the College of Bishops. That's right. But she actually did get a cross section of the church to feed information to her so that yeah, she yeah. could write this address that reflects mm -hmm. us all. And but you, you know, this is this is not something new with uh, bishops uh, Jefferson right. Snorton, even from her first election and her willingness to go to break the trend and be the first woman to go to the African regions and be bishop, my wife having been her personal assistant, I noticed how she listened to the people in the villages. She even listened to the children and she implemented things even within her short term there that would make the 11th a different a different uh, uh a different episcopal district from here on out and be in place where it is for the other bishops to follow her trail and then for uh bishop lawson uh rj to come in now and be that trendsetter there so this is not something new and we've even watched her when she's come to the the nation's capital and how she finesses around and moves throughout delegations of many ecumenical faith uh base faith based uh networks and she just didn't, her, her presence, her scholarly, her prophetic uh, voice just demands respect. Mm -hmm. So Amen. it was, it was, 
it was just assumed that she was going to she was going to assume that position and she was going to continue to roll as yeah. God moves as God leads her. And this anything good coming out of full. Hopkinsville, Kentucky? Right. Yeah. It was <laughs> it was full of this whole message she did. It was full of action and honesty, and that's what yeah. I appreciate more, more most, especially from the college. Honesty mm -hmm. and action, not just talking, yes. talking, talking. We gotta walk it like we talking, y'all, in That's this right. church, and we gotta start That's doing right. what we talking about, and then we gotta be honest with ourselves and accept the fact that yeah, we might be grand, and it's time to do something mm -hmm. about it. It's time for us to get more ecumenical dollars and grant dollars. It's, yes. It was honest and it was action packed. Yes, yes, yes. 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 And for those who are on, on uh, who are ill at ease, if you will, right. for right. her abilities to get grants, please relax. Because <laughs> she does this, as we were told All by our sister, uh, with her eyes closed. We That's believe right. God that her skills are going to Shout out to Dr. Kai Horn. Shout out to Dr. Kai Horn. It's yeah. going to give us favor. Yeah. Believe it. Believe it. Well, let me skip for just a moment. Just a moment. We'll, we'll get back to you. We want to acknowledge two of our distinguished bishops who retired uh, at this yes. general conference. Uh, Bishop uh, Henry Milton Williamson and Bishop C. James King served valiantly. They served with uh, with strong power and uh, leadership. Uh, and it is just a joy and blessing to know both of them. Occasionally, Amen. Bishop Williamson would call me, and I knew when he called, it was going to be maybe a 20, 30, 40 minute conversation. <laughs> uh, but no That's matter what the retirement. conversation, I left inspired. And let me tell you about Bishop Henry Williamson. And we know he taught, he's long winded. We know that. And I my love my. him. But he would always end with prayer. That's my I'm dad. telling you, a prayer That's warrior. True. And he will pour in yes. Bishop C. James yes, King. It was, it was just so good to see yes. him in Amen. the space. We know he's had some health challenges, yeah. but uh, we thank God for, for their service to our church uh, and for being retired uh, honorably uh, and to have their families there, their, their wives were there. We know we had the, the, the beautiful spouses were there and all of their splendor. Oh, yes. Uh, and, 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 and glory, uh, all of them. It was so good to see Sister Umorte, uh, yes. uh as well as uh, uh, Sister Best as well. Yes. Uh, and of course, uh, we know uh, Sister Carter uh, brought yes. it on to the Sweet African girl. time. And, and there's another picture that I got to find of, of my first lady, uh, Dr. Louise Baker Brown. Yes. Dr. There's a, somebody captured a picture of Dr. Brown on her phone. I said, Dr. Brown is on her phone on Instagram. She's an Instagram <laughs> queen. She loves Instagram. And, and right. I can find that picture uh, and put it up. But we also got a chance to remember those bishops yes. who died, yes. who yes. went yes. on to glory during the last quadrennium, Bishop Best, Bishop E. Lynn Brown. How I Amen. miss that voice of Bishop E. Lynn uh, Brown <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Bishop Ronald Cunningham, yes. Bishop Gray, and uh, Bishop Immorte. And uh, yeah. I'm trying to get to That's Nigeria for Bishop Imorte's service, uh, and I ain't afraid to ask for help. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Put me in your suitcase. <laughs> Anybody want to help Skip Mason get to Nigeria? Uh, I will receive it with love. But I really want to go and um, be there as a part of that ceremony. Let me let me also say we had representation from all of our schools. Lane yes. College and Amen. Miles College and, and Payne College, uh, yes. of course, what a, what a, the great Phillips School of, of Theology and all of the Phillips alumni uh, yes. gathered. Yes. I, I know some of the members of the Greek fraternities and, <clears throat> excuse me, sororities gathered and took uh, pictures. Yes, I, 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 I couldn't, yes. If somebody sends me the Delta picture, I'll post it. I couldn't find yes. it on these are the AKAs and, of course, the distinguished men of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. Actually, uh, uh, Reverend Neal was supposed to send me the Greek pictures, but he's in Tennessee on vacation. That's right, and I didn't get it. But if you send it to me, uh, please, I'll try to get it up before the um, the end of the show. We want to take a few minutes. Let me just go through a few pictures and then we're going to just uh, have our final discussions about some things that we um, 
that we saw. <clears throat> People got up early in the morning and walked through the city of Cincinnati. <clears throat> Excuse me. What what do you think about Cincinnati? How did you like the city? Were any of you all able to get out and to take and partake in any of the activities uh, at eating any of the restaurants and all? Were any of you able to get out and and do those types of things? Well, you you know us younger adults, we 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 venture out a little further in the two and three block distance. So we did find you, some pretty yeah. decent restaurant. Uh, about I, yeah, I'm sure. See, I'm sure you did. So I, it, I'm it, sure. It, it was actually a nice city, and we actually got a chance to walk down by the river walk um, and and do some of the things Thursday. It, in all in all, it was a excellent nice city. I had complaints about Cincinnati. The weather was even Good. nice. Right. Let's not forget the welcome reception at the National Underground Railroad. Oh, the, wel the Railroad welcome reception Street. was in hosted by the Second Episcopal District. Yes. Oh, it, it was yeah. incredible. I thought I had some pictures um, of that, but hold on, let me see. Yeah, I think I do. Let me see if I can get them loaded. But uh, it, that was a magnificent reception, and, and you all said, uh, Bishop Thomas and others said, well, don't come to eat and get food. There was a lot of food at that reception. There <laughs> was. It really was. It really, it was, really yeah. was a lot of food. It was a lot of food at that uh, reception at the and National the Underground Railroad Freedom Center. An amazing the, museum. The exhibits were just amazing and wonderful. And, and we had full uh, access uh, to, to that. I was just, um, I just admired this beautiful bridge. Um, yeah. that, that yes. connected uh, Ohio uh, to, to Kentucky uh, as well. Uh, let me see what else do I have to share. Oh, uh, of course, um, <clears throat> our good oh, friend, yeah. Dr. Yes. Tyrone. Yes. Is, uh, My good friend. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I, we, we just mm -hmm. celebrate him. There was yes. a prayer room there. Did anybody get a chance yeah. to get to the prayer room? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Good. Good. And, and kudos Yes. I, I, I would be remiss if I just did not say a little about the retirement of Bishop Henry Milton Williamson yes. Sr. It was he who embraced me and the Carter Temple Church family uh, into the CME Church and uh, the training of, 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 of a new membership and boys to men's ministry started under that man and I, I would be remiss to say he fought for our men's ministry that is a part of our church and i just want to tell him publicly thank you for being a dad to us and four four sister preachers came out of that church that have served and are serving as presiding elders mm -hmm. in this zion wow. bless amen. you dad amen Hey, man, wow, that, we have that, an inside joke. We call Mr. Williamson uh, the Joe Cook of the CMB Church. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's been my bishop. Amen. And I tell you, when you talk about prayer war, Dr. Skip Mason, this one word when I think about prayer, and everybody in the first Episcopal district will say it, prayer call at 6 a.m. in the morning. So when my bishop calls me at 545, Reverend Cam, you want to be on the prayer call this morning? And I have to graciously say, yes, sir, Bishop, I'll get on the prayer call and make sure I don't fall back asleep. He's a prayer warrior. Yeah. He's definitely something else. And I, <laughs> I love him to death. Shout out to our retiring uh, judicial, <laughs> judicial member. Either. Thank God for them. Yes, indeed. They're great. My girlfriends. Yes, Praise indeed. God. Shout out to them uh, as well. Uh, let me see. Uh, what else have we did I overlook? Well, we, did, we didn't we didn't mention Dr. Cliff Harris and yeah. Dr. Leo Pinkett. So yes, we, yeah. we, we, put, we put pictures up of them, but yes, yeah. let's yeah. let's shout them out and yeah. thank them for oh, their yeah. tremendous service. And let's not uh, forget CME TV. CME. Oh yes. And the nothing if it hadn't been for CME TV and OTI Technologies. Can I can I provided us the technical support with the clickers? And yes, and they were there from beginning to end to make sure that everything we needed technology wise happened. Let me say this about CME TV and CIT and CMAM. 
let me let you know that that that, that collaboration matters to our church. Yes, it does. And I don't know whether we will really understand the fact that they're not necessarily three separate entities when we come together. We come together to, to bring what you see yes. that you might see as music, but without uh, CME TV, you wouldn't hear us. You That's couldn't right. see as well. Uh, and without uh, CIT, you wouldn't get the words. You wouldn't know where they were. And while we, yeah. you know, we have some technological things we may have needed to make that even stronger, we're on our way somewhere. And so uh, while Amen. each yeah. of us, has, you know, we're glad to CIT is now a department. And we are hoping that that means that there's some things we're going to be able to do going forward. That's right. If I heard, I skip, I heard 30. Yes, please go right ahead. You mentioned the Sunday kickoff. You forgot about communion on Saturday with Bishop James Walker. Oh, Lord. Lord. Listen, listen, how can I forget the about leftovers. communion? Woo. Lord Where knows he preached the word. The leftovers. The leftovers. Absolutely. Yes, he did. Yes, God bless yes. Bishop Walker. Yes. Uh, hey, I tell you, man. that that was some some message that he uh he preached. That got the conference off to a start. Yes, it did. Yes, yes. It did. yes. That truly uh got the conference off to the start. Let me, there are a couple of more uh images that I want to um to share Dr. with you. Dr. Mason. Yes, go right ahead. Please. Somebody in the chat said, "Let's talk about the orderlies," and we know they did a. <laughs> they they, out, they out. were working. Wonderful job. Yes, 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 they did. Wonderful. They worked. I mean, you all earned your pay at that general. Yes, yes, you did. Yes, you I did. Tell you, did hey. any of you all get a chance to? Well, first of all, we had the historical exhibit. Shout out oh, to the yes. commission yes. on archives yes. and history, which I am a very proud uh, member of. And uh, we had a wonderful uh, exhibit uh, of his of banners uh, of our bishops, our bishops. and exhibits of, of each Episcopal district. Uh, and we give thanks to all who shared uh, and worked tremendously hard. I'm going to do a special show just uh, on that uh, yes. as well. Uh, but shout out to 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 the uh, Commission mm -hmm. on Archives and History. Uh, Dr. Raymond yes. uh, Somerville yes. uh, helped to get the judges, our uh, CME uh, church historian. Did any of you all get a chance to go and do, uh, check out any of the vendors that they had? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. I had to pull, <laughs> yes. I, I, I had I, to pull I, my wife back from those vendors. <laughs> And uh, fortunately, uh, for the consecration service, there was a vendor who had robes where I could get a last minute robe to participate in that. But the vendors were, uh, were extraordinary. I, I, I want to say this, too. Just hopping off the plane and walking down the streets of Cincinnati and seeing the CME welcome banners and seeing the yes. marquees on the street yeah. Yeah. made our presence known. Whoever the host was and had yep. those small little uh, cars to transport people around the immediate area, that was novel. Having the, vent, the, the food vending services right there in the conference, yeah. we yeah. would have never survived if it were yeah. not for the visionary of that of that portion yeah. there. So I want to, and, and seeing those banners. I thought I was walking through the United Nations and the Hall of Fame uh, when we walked through. So that was that was definitely an impressive. Oh, I, I, the, I core team. Team. the core team, uh, Bishop Marvin Frank Thomas Sr., uh, Sister Clarice Chapman, who was yeah. our local yeah. host chair, yeah. assisted by uh, Sister Sharonda Greenlee, mm -hmm. Reverend Ian Gibson, Wow. Uh, Reverend Pansy Washington. Yeah. And we also had the connectional support of Reverend Dr. Roderick Lewis and Dr. Yeah. Penae Wood. That's right. They're the team that gave you what you got with the supporting cast Love of it. our uh, local host chairs. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. awesome. Awesome. It was. Awesome. And we were real we branded. Had on I'm Wednesday, a press conference. Yep. Where the yeah. mayor and the city commissioners, the right. county commissioners, showed up to officially welcome Bishop Reddick mm -hmm. and Bishop Thomas and the CME Church yeah. to Cincinnati. Wow. We there made was a, a financial mm -hmm. impact. We brought over five million dollars in revenue wow. to That's the city of Cincinnati while wow. we were there those days. 
over 9,000 rooms and all of the vendors and all of the hotels and businesses that all contributed. The CME Church is on the map. AME Church, y'all coming to Cincinnati in 2024. We have set the mark. That's right. So they, they are coming ah, in 2024. Wow. Cincinnati in 24 for their general conference. We have set the bar. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm glad you chose a venue that would not keep us, that would not allow us to stay there past 1030 because oh, you know in general conferences you know we'd it. have been there at 2 a.m. in the morning, but we had to close the business down for the day. Mm -hmm. I was well, let, let, let on the clock Friday told him the only thing I disagree with. Like, Dr. Skip, what you saying? I want to say, let me shout out to the at the the best conference secretary of any denomination, my yes. dear friend and brother, Dr. Jermaine Marshall. Yes, yes, yes. Marshall. Hey, man, powerful, and, and, and his team. He had a wonderful on, team. Uh, yes. He had a wonderful team. I know Dr. Capers yes. and others, but uh, we have a, a an incredible uh, mm -hmm. uh, convention staff. I, and, and I knew that I could not remember everything and 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 everybody, and that's why I brought you wonderful people on to to help us to recall uh, all that happened. Uh, and we know that everybody did their very best. Uh, we know that there were long meetings and way too long motions and way too long seconds and all that kind of stuff and all, all of the drama. That that we love at a convention, uh, yeah. at a conference, and all. Um, but and, and you know, we also we had a scare, as you all know, and it was publicly uh, announced. Amen. You know that uh, COVID was running uh, rampant, mm -hmm. and yeah. yours truly tested positive on Saturday morning. Oh wow! Oh my God! So I am uh, on a five day yes. rest, uh, and I feel good. Uh, I, okay. Friday, it was rough. Mm -hmm. I said at the uh, uh, in the final session, and, and who else could who else could manage the final session better than Bishop Oval? Oval Hawthorn Lakey, you got that right. <laughs> Good God Almighty, I'm, I'm convinced they put B Bishop Lakey to close it out. I'm the convinced of that. But I, was, I was feeling yeah, he's, real, he's real bad for <laughs> Friday, and uh, I got home and Saturday morning uh, went to the doctor. Uh, and so doctor said, take these pills for five days rest and you should be good to go because on next Friday evening, my children and I are scheduled to fly to Accra, Ghana, uh, to celebrate my 60th birthday. So y'all send up some oh, healing mercies, right. uh, yes. for me and for all of us, I talked to Bishop Brown today, as I told you, and two of our presiding elders, uh, tested positive as well. And a whole lot of folks. Yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah, right. And if you were around, folks, and you have not been tested, please, ma'am, please, sir, get tested. This is the reason why I'm sharing this information uh, with you. Uh, it'll only take a few minutes and not a home test either. You need to go mm -hmm. in and get the PCR test to make sure. Because I took the home test and it said I was fine. And, and when I went to the doctor, they said otherwise. But let, let, okay. let's, any final thoughts before we. we Can I Close. Can I say about that? Before you say what you need to say, uh, Reverend Etna, y'all, it's time for our uh, great music ministry to record an album. I'm telling That's you, right. I, I mean, Amen. we need, we need a CD like yesterday, okay, that Amen. we can load up and, and play and listen uh, and be a part of our list. Reverend Etna, go right ahead, dear. Before I, I comment on that, because you know I'm going to, I just want to thank the senior bishop for calm and and yes. focused leadership. Yes. And there could have been chaos. Yes. It, it matters that that team came together and made sure we were as calm as we can be and gave direction Amen. so that we did not, so that it did not become chaotic. Right. And, and that Amen. is a blessing for us have that kind of leadership and then finally about that recording let me say this uh cmam is 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 ready to work with all of our technological uh, uh abilities we know that cme tv is recording others so why we it's not for us to be recorded uh 
in as the CME Church. We've got to figure out location. We've got to figure out that. But let me say to the CME Church, everyone who's listening and anyone you'll send it to, we don't have a budget. So when we get it done, we're going to need everybody who wants it done to say, I not only want it, but I'm willing to invest in it. So when we invest, we can get it done. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Before you come, Reverend Cam, shout uh -huh. out to the ladies of Zeta, Phi Beta, Sorority mm -hmm. Incorporated. And uh, let, me, are you with yeah, let me thank Tanisha Holland Chair for sharing this picture. Delta, you have a few minutes to get a picture to me. Come on. Come on. Where are you? I didn't take that. I, I, I know I know you took one. Oh, here it is. Amen. Here it is. Reverend Dr. Hey, no. Boy sent me a picture. Give me a second. I'm gonna load it up. Uh, yes, I got, to, I, got to, I got a whole lot of Delta friends in the CME church. I got Amen. to be Amen. 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 Talking to one right here. So give Dr. Yes, Skip, in, Reverend Dr. Dr. Essie. Essie. Dr. Skip, I have got to thank you for this hard work yeah. that you have put together. Absolutely. And uh, down through the months, especially during COVID, you have worked untirantly my brother and we want you to know that we just love you and and may i also say to you the best is yet to come that's right the best is yet right. yes. to come keep on doing what you're doing and watch god move in a mighty way and yes, you're like thank you thank you for loving this church loving her like you love her oh that's right yes. I received Even you that. You didn't thing. get to do your show from Cincinnati. <laughs> well, you know what? The plans were listen yeah. to this, y'all. I was going to do a daily conversation. What in the heck was I thinking about? You can't do a daily conversation. <laughs> we even had a room set up for you, Skip. I know. At a CME <laughs> conference, you know, uh, you can't miss the meetings. I was a part of the Episcopacy That's Committee, true. I was working on yeah. the exhibits. So I yes. said, we're going to do this wrap up show. This will be my, my last show until sometime in August. I'm going to take some time, travel, Amen. family reunion, go to Africa, but we're coming back. Uh, we're coming back. Let me, let me put these words up before I give you all a we'll chance. The deltas. I'm going to put Don't the Delta. <laughs> but, but we're coming, but we're coming back bold. We're going to yep. face down. We're going to embrace next and we're going to see new. Yes. That's right. what we're going. Yes. We need these words on t-shirts. We need these words yes. where we can see them. Every That's what church we're going to do, and let me let me share with you the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. Oh, there they go. There they go. All right. Woo! So we got yeah, the Delta here. Know. I know the ladies of Sigma Gamma Rho were there. I know yes. that. Uh, I saw a number of them. So if you you share it with me before we uh, get off the air, fine. Let me shout out to the best photographer in the land. Yes. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Neil. Wonderful. Neil. Wonderful. Edward Neal is a beast, is a yes, bomb. He is. And yes. I tell you, I forgot to mention that it ain't a general conference if the shoe shine man ain't there. Got that right. Brother Robinson. I tell you, Brother Robinson. Yes, indeed. And he brought his grandson with it. Oh, he brought his grandson with him. Yes, he had his grandson. Wow. Learning, learning the so, trade. Yes. So, everybody, I want to give you a chance to make your closing thoughts. Maybe it's something you. Uh, you know, whatever you want to say as we close out, if we forgot somebody, some name, uh, we, we asked for your apology. We, we tried to just kind of cover a little bit of everything. But we're going to start with you, Reverend Cam. Just give me your closing thoughts uh, mm -hmm. on the, uh, you know, the, the general conference. And then mm -hmm. we'll go to you, Reverend Etna. And then we're going to close out with a brief video inviting you to Georgia in 2026. All right. All Reverend right. Cam. Thanks so much, Dr. Skip Mason. Allow me to say two things. Uh, thank you for this opportunity is one of them. But the two things are, uh, I'll say it this way, Mr. Chairman, Mike Five, Earl J. Griffin, they stole my clicker, and I can't get my clicker back. That was so funny to me, and I talked that to him was, about that. <laughs> that was hilarious. They took that his clicker. Hilarious. Oh, yes, that was hilarious. But 
thank you for this opportunity to be on this show and to the opportunity to be at the general conference. Of course, I do represent the youth of our church and the Connectional Youth Ministry. So I do just want to say um, that the Connectional Youth Ministry looks forward to uh, expanding our content and expanding what we do to every local church district yeah. region in our entire zion we do want to thank mm -hmm. dr crutchfield for all that he does mm -hmm. for us as the general secretary of christian education and formation mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to our new leadership um as our chair denise anders modest is now our chair bishop denise anders modest so we're grateful to work with her mm -hmm. we're grateful to work with all of our bishops in the college of bishops as the youth continue to have a seat at the table and we get mm -hmm. sent from the children's table to another table. And it is our prayer that we will be going bold this next quadrennial and that prayerfully at the General Conference of 2026 in Georgia, that we'll be able to have all of our youth and we'll have a strong youth presence at the next General Conference. Thank you, Dr. Mason. And thank you to everyone who's hey, on. Hey, Reverend Cam, bless you, my friend. Thank you yeah. so much. Reverend Etna. Thank you so much, Dr. Skip, for everything you do to keep us connected to one another. Uh, let me first say to the General Conference, thank you for uh, approving a, a pastoral respite care uh, resolution that we didn't know was gonna happen. I'm grateful to God for that. But then let me finally say to the Connection of Music and Art Ministry team, you all are the best there ever was. And I am grateful to God for everything you have done in the pandemic throughout this entire quadrennial. You have done your, not only what you were committed to do, but you have done in a way that has made this entire connection know that there is there are gifts, there are abilities, there are talents that are still not all tapped into, but we're grateful to God for each coordinator. And we wanna again, thank God for the gift of, of music and writing of, of, of Dr. Tawana Harris. And as always, of Reverend Dolly Hall, thank you. We thank God for you all and what you bring to us. The best is yet to come, and it does not yet appear what shall be. God bless you. Dr. Mason, I forgot something, and I don't want to get killed by my boss, Reverend Sarita Collins. CMECYM.org. Go visit it now and connect with us in the Connection Youth Ministry. CMECYM.org. Bless you. Thank you. That's job security. <laughs> Amen. I thought, whoa, whoa, before I get in trouble, thank God to <laughs> Bishop Teresa Jefferson Snorton. She has been a blessing to us. She lets us spread our wings, but she gives us the guidance that we need. And it's just our prayer that we get to keep her. All right, <laughs> that's it. We both had need a job security, right? <laughs> thank you, Dr. Mason. Hey, thank you. Thank you so okay. much. Uh, Reverend Dr. S.C. Clark George, give us your closing thoughts. I would like to close with a, a word of God that has meant so much to me down through the years that says, for God has not given us I'm the not. spirit of fear, mm. but love, power, and self-control. As we go through these next four years, my family, I ask that you would hold that particular scripture from 2 Timothy to your hearts. If you're going through anything in life, remember that God is there with you and God will see you through. God bless you. And I look forward to sharing with all of you as we move through these next four years. God bless and take care of yourselves. Bishops, I love each of you and I pray for you daily. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. Brother James Blackman, give us your closing thoughts. I'm well, Dr. Thomas, you know, I'm Southern Bow from Alabama, so I'm going to yield and let ladies first. So I'm going to let Dr. McIntosh go in front of me. <laughs> Well, that's very kind of you. Go ahead, Reverend Doctor. All right. Uh, well, we thank you for, on behalf of the Second Episcopal District, for being your host for mm -hmm. this historic general conference. Man, our motto in the Second is that every second counts. 
And I just want to thank every member of the second from Hickman, Kentucky to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and all points in between who showed up to volunteer to help out wherever they could help. Whatever glitches happened, charge to our heads and not our hearts. We mm -hmm. tried to give you the best of who we were. And the next time y'all come to the second Episcopal district, we will put out the red carpet as we have done previously. And I want to say thank you to the Episcopacy Committee for sending us Bishop Denise Anders Modest. We are looking forward to seeing how God is going to lead her in leading us. That's right. Amen. Amen. Brother Blackman. All right. Thank you, Dr. Skip. Uh, Brother Skip, one of the greatest fraternities in the world. If I ate. Uh, but I also like to, like like Cam and Reverend Edna, I, I, I have to have job security. You know, this is my last year with the Connection Young Adult Ministry. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to the Connection Young Adult Ministry on the leadership of our president, Sister Tiffany Thompson. As you can see, um, and, and, and many of you all know, we've been working literally for since 2014, uh, getting things done behind the scenes. So I, I just ask that the church continue to embrace the Young Adult Ministry um don't make it don't look at it seem like we're being pushed back but make us but think of it as we're in being inclusive bishop palmer stated in right. um his message which was that was to me that was the most profound message of the general conference when he said make sure that we have our members know that they belong with us That's um so as we have as we continue to go to the through these next four years we ask that you embrace not only just the young adults the youth but make sure that you go out into your local community and make sure that they belong to our church as well. Um, Bishop Snorri stated that a lot of our that our churches are great, but we live in we our, most of our churches are in communities where there aren't great people. So we need to go out right. and embrace. We have to get outside of our living museums that we call places of worship and go out and embrace the community. So I look forward to being bold, seeing new, uh, and I, I'm just excited. You all know I'm the traditional young adult of the group. Um, and, and I, I miss my scantrons uh, for elections, but I also look forward to being able to use forward thinking technology, not only with the clickers, um, but there is so much more we can do because we need to really look at cost savings. We spent over a half a million dollars on paper. My God. Let's, let's, we, we started this general conference. Let, let, it, there are some more things we can do um, technology wise um, that can make us more efficient and save uh, more money. So just look forward to the next year conference uh, in sweet Georgia. Old Georgia. I'm, 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 I'm hoping to go to Savannah. Amen. <laughs> we'll let you know soon. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, Reverend um, Alfred Harrison, give us your closing thoughts, please. Amen. Well, first of all, I want to say, as we have navigated through this pandemic, I want to thank you, Dr. Skip Mason, for keeping us connected. Many of us don't realize that over the last four years, we had not seen some faces that we had seen, and we did not see some faces that we had seen before the pandemic struck, but you have kept us connected, and I th I'm thankful for that. It was just so impressive to see the young adult presence uh, in the committees, the hard work of the committees and also to see the cohesiveness of the College of Bishops and how they supported one another as we navigated through this general conference. I also must say this, that the 11th Episcopal District is mighty grateful that we have crossed cross geographical lines in bringing us none other than Bishop Bishop. Kwame Lawson RJ to the 11th Episcopal District and the African uh, natives have spoken up the indigenous uh, regions have stood their ground, and I must say, from the from the on from the what what leaves me with this with this impression that I have not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God have prepared for them, the CME Church, the children, the youth, the young adults, the elderly of the them who love Him, but 
I think we saw a little revelation in the spirit of what God is going to do. For he searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. But we Amen. shall be bold. We Amen. shall face now. We shall embrace next. And we shall see the new thing that God is doing hallelujah. in our life. I mean, hallelujah. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'm so grateful to each of you. Uh, and as I take my little summer respite and break, uh, look forward to a new season and inviting many of our new general officers. Shout out to all of yeah. the new elected hey, general God. officers that we have. Uh, Reginald Barnes. Yes. Reverend yes. Reginald Barnes. The and man. Anthony, uh, Smokes uh, as well. Yeah. And who else do we have? Brother Shannon Falk. Uh, yes. Dr. Teresa Duhard, yes. uh, yes. yes. uh, as well. Shout out. So I look forward to having uh, yes. them as well and <clears throat> our bishops and all of that. So we got a, a good year uh, to uh, begin to what? Be bold, face new, embrace yes. this. And, and right. new. you all have been a blessing to me and a blessing to our church this evening. Dr. Mason. Yes. I was going to say, uh, you did you see the chat, Reverend uh, Anitha Keith? To no, ask I God know. to bless that family, to bless yeah. her family, and and all those yeah. things. We want to remember her before oh, we sign off. Absolutely, the lady who passed away yes. from the Fourth Episcopal District. That's right. We we were we were saddened by the news. In fact, I saw Bishop Lake on the <laughs> elevator that morning, and he shared with me, and my heart just dropped. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. at the, the the news of that, and so uh, our hearts go out to Reverend uh, Keith's family. Uh, and we lift them up uh, during this uh, tremendous time for them. And we continue to pray for uh, our church and uh, our future is bright. Uh, and we take it one yes. day at a time and uh, do what God has called us to, to do. Uh, again, thank you, my brothers and sisters, for sharing with us. And uh, as it was stated, Bishop Thomas Lewis Brown Sr. Uh, extended the invitation for you to come to Georgia. So for the next four years, I need for you to keep Georgia on your oh, mind. No, no. I will see you all sometime in August for another season of Conversations with Dr. Bless Skip Mason. Bless Georgia. Georgia. Bishop Thomas Brown and Dr. Louise Baker Brown invite you to the 40th Quadrennial Session and the 41st General Conference of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church in the summer of 2026, convening in the great state of Georgia. Make plans to join the 6th in 2026.